Okay, thank you. Yeah, so my talk will be kind of mathematical illustration to physicist talk to uh, Marcus and Sergey. And uh, I will, uh, so the, the whole perspective will be kind of on resources will be some kind of Picard Lefschetz theory, which was already mentioned. And I'll start with this kind of simplest instance of in resurgence when I integrate exponent of polynomial or rational function. Uh, ah, for example, and uh, yeah, in fact, it will be uh, uh, because I kind of will model uh, mm. uh, uh, field theory. I'll say it's kind of zero dimensional P of T. For example, I integrate exponent minus s of x divided by h bar dx. Uh, s is a uh, polynomial, let's say, in one variable. It will be my action. And I integrate over a certain uh, chain of integration, which is called gamma. Mm. And uh, the main uh, theme of my talk will be rotating Planck constant. So h bar will be non-zero complex number, no longer mm, positive guy. And let's do its kind of airy case. Uh, so the polynomial is the x cubed over 3 minus x in order to get a simple derivative. And um, mm. uh, um, what are possible contours of integration? If argument of h bar is 0, so it means that h bar is positive number, say, real number, uh, then uh, there are three directions at infinity when action goes to plus infinity, like x cubed, uh, to positive real numbers, and uh, you get argument 0, argument 2 pi over 3, and argument 4 pi over 3, you get three directions, and you <laughs> have kind of three possible uh, um, uh, chains of integration, but only two are independent because some of them is equal to zero. So you get two interesting integrals for each h bar to study. And um, uh, that's one way, but there are also left shot symbols. What are In this case, it will be just um, uh, steepest descent uh, pass. Uh, uh, to draw left shift symbols would start with critical point of the action. So what a critical point? Yeah, you solve equation S prime as x equal to zero. And because I was smart to choosing this one over three, you see that solution is this. You have two solutions, x1 is equal to minus one, x2 is equal to plus 1, get two critical points. N and mm, then I get critical values uh, s alpha is equal to s of x alpha. So I get just two critical values, s1 is equal to plus 2 third, s2 is equal to minus 2 third. And these are elements of this, what's your gay called, Borel plane. Values of my functional s, the points s1 and s2. And now, uh, what we do, we, uh, if uh, h bar is not real, uh, or, or, uh, we define left shift symbol, uh, this symbol. Uh, gamma alpha h bar, uh, where alpha is 1, 2, one of these two uh, critical points, uh, is pre-image of the ray, uh, which would be like this or like this, uh, of ray um, s alpha <coughs> plus um, h bar times positive numbers. So if uh, you draw a ray in direction argument of h bar, straight ray, under map 
map s from c this kind of x variable to c which will be this Borel plane and if you take uh, you see that the map is doubly ramified at this point and consider pullback you get uh, upstairs you get uh, two uh, actually copy of r it will be two copies of real ray and this will be two uh, domains of integrations and then uh, we define uh, mm. integral e alpha of h bar where alpha is one two one my critical point it's the, it will be the integral of exponent of dx of the symbol and it's defined up to uh, defined up to sign because one should orient this line there are two ways to orient it there's no preferred choice a priori and uh, when h bar goes to zero this fixed argument which is still not real it has asymptotic expansion e alpha h bar will go uh, roughly the following first of all this ambiguity plus minus then they get exponent of this value of critical points minus s alpha divided by h bar which will be uh, Re, uh, minus very big real, real number if uh, minus one oh it will be some number then multiply by square root of two pi h bar then divide by maybe derivative of function at point x alpha to power one half and then you get series with static with one and this will be divergent series it will be formal power series which is divergent and we want to be, uh, kind of resumate this series Mm. Yeah, in principle, uh, uh, yeah, also one can see these things, it's E alpha h bar is integral over s belonging to this s alpha plus h bar plus exponent minus s of h bar times some algebraic function. One can rewrite it. Uh, on the great, great section, one form case maybe ds, and one form uh, function is s goes to dx over ds and invert s is a map, so it will be three valued algebraic function. <coughs> okay, so that's very simple game. Yeah, so we have this nice asymptotic expansion, and let me remove a kind of universal term from this expression uh, so define g alpha of h bar uh, it will be exponent plus s alpha divided h bar and multiplied by 2 pi h bar to power minus one half uh, i will not treat these things times e alpha h, h it's certain form of power series in h bar starting with uh, uh, something. Mm. So we get um, uh, two functions. Each function uh, mm. in fact it's honest function and honest function when uh, h bar is not real line so we get analytic functions two, we get two analytic functions on upper half plane and on low half plane and which are c infinity up to boundary so the analytic inside and continues to c infinity functions uh, everywhere and the stellar uh, expansion will be exactly this series yeah so we get uh, two functions an upper half plane two function low half plane <coughs> and how uh, they behave if you go through the lines you get some jumps and we have jump along uh, one ray when argument of h bar is equal to zero is the following uh, you look what happens with this integration cycles for example if you look uh, uh, turn this ray very close to the right then gamma one uh, if you rotate it doesn't change but gamma two uh, goes to gamma 2 plus gamma 1 or minus because I didn't wasn't very precise about science and similar 
uh, for a uh, uh, low plane, but and what does it uh, tell me about uh, this uh, uh, rescaled integrals? Because I rescaled, uh, what happens is that j, j let's say, 1 uh, h bar, if you cross the line, goes to j1, but j2 goes to j2. And I integrate and write exponent minus this s1 minus s2 of h bar, which will be a very big positive number, real number. Uh, so the things will be very, very small, multiply by g1. And similar, <coughs> similar if you go to this thing, but now gamma 2 will go to gamma 2, and gamma 1 go to gamma 1 plus gamma you get uh, different metrics. So, uh, what goes on? Uh, I claim that what we do, we glue, uh, some, uh, we, we glue some holomorphic vector bundle, holomorphic vector bundle uh, on complex plane with h bar parameter. It will be kind of trivial outside kind of C plus C. And uh, this basis corresponding to my uh, critical points outside a race. Outside to race. And, uh, and if you cross the ray, what will be the, uh, the transformation? We apply certain uh, uh, cross, let's say, uh, left ray. We apply transformation, which is um, this linear operator, which can be also sorted as the following way. We take exponent, uh, kind of diagonal matrix of exponent of Si is alpha divided by h bar. Alpha is 1, 2. Multiply by matrix 1, 1, 0, 1. What happens with uh, cycles integration and uh, conjugate by diagonal inverse power. So we get of diagonal term will be exponentially small. And similar think we go on the um, um, as array. Yeah, so uh, so we get we make some uh, uh, bundles glued from uh, trivial bundles and certain transformation long cuts. And all this thing says that this G1, G2 form Holomorphic section of the glued bundle. It says uh, mm -mm. Mm, nothing more. And yeah, usually uh, mm, people then say that how this makes a resumation make sense of formal power series to, to promote it to actual analytic function, do Borel summation. But one can do it from kind of, kind of different perspective already on these terms. We don't, I don't think about Borel uh, transformation transform at all. Uh, I, I can ask the following. Uh, yeah, so this so this Borel uh, summation, if you get certain series, and h1, uh, when then we are making new series, sum over n, n over n factorial, uh, I mean z to the power n, for example, and make an analytic continuation, make some analytic, uh, uh, analytic continuation, and plus uh, uh, Laplace transform. And we want to get actual function. Uh, how it's applicable to this situation. Yeah, first remark that this uh, series G alpha, uh, they do not depend on the, on the choice of sector, uh, uh, of upper half plane, lower half plane, just the same. Why it happens? This guy is IC infinity, but when we change, we change by something which has trivial Taylor expansion zero. Exponent one over x it's has trivial expansion. So, so what happens is G1, G2 formal
a certain series independent on, on sectors. And, and here we get actual holomorphic function. Uh, let me explain. Where is this? Yeah. Or maybe I could continue on as a board. Mm. So the, uh, the, the kind of uh, very simple proposal how to uh, re make a resumation of this formal power series to promote to this function. It just looks on, on the structure, it, it gives you the answer. So can okay, first solve Riemann Hilbert problem. It means that kind of glue bundle according to these two uh, transformations along race. And what does it mean glue bundles? You, you glue some bundles and you make holomorphic trivialization. You can do it one way or another. Uh, and what you found? Find holomorphic trivialization. So it means that you get um, certain function g of h bar. Uh, let's maybe some g2. <coughs> Uh, uh, g to valid function for h bar not real uh, not uh, not real lines and such as the jump of this uh, thing along this uh, each ray will be given exactly by uh, left or right multiplication by this stuff so we found this in, in some way and uh, uh, the main point is, uh, it's for these things, we really need these critical values and these integer matrices, nothing else. Need to know only critical values and these integer matrices, like in this case. Uh, mm. Yeah, so we get a uh, certain g-valued function, but then if we expand in, in form power series, it doesn't depend on the choice of things. You get certain, from this universal procedure, certain uh, invertible matrix with values in with coefficients in form power series. It's independent on the choice of uh, sector. And then that's by definition, we see that g formal multiplied by g1 formal will be is analytic function in each bar because it will produce these holomorphic sections in this holomorphic trivialization. Uh, it is it, it's, it's a holomorphic, it's a it's convergent series. Yeah, so you do some calculation with this universal problem, uh, apply to this form of series, multiply, you get series which is convergent. Now you can evaluate for, let's say, sufficient small values of h bar. And now you apply to this a priori given construction back and you get actual value of your intervals. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a very simple way to uh, mm. calculate this uh, thing mm. without Borel transform. Yeah, so that's... Uh, mm. Mm. And it's, it's kind of equivalent to calculation with Borel transform and this uh, radial... Uh, stuff and so on, uh, but I kind of found it mm, mathematically more appealing because you don't really need a fine coordinates in each bar, yeah, so you just can apply it in different situation. Yeah, the same story works in, uh, in for high dimensional integrals. Uh, yeah, if you, if, if you have some algebraic variety of complex dimension n, well, let's say capital, capital N, for example, could be Cn and some polynomial, and S this polynomial map, and we get some polynomial volume element, you want to integrate this 6, and you apply maybe some algebraic volume form on manifold. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, Again, one can do left shift symbols, but left shift symbols will not pull back. It will be uh, uh, the following things. 
Lefschitz Dimble. Uh, uh, actually, I will assume that my critical values are all more so nice, uh, not, not the more complicated story as Sergei considered, kind of really isolated. I think Lefschitz symbols will be gradient trajectories uh, for um, mm, the real part of S divided by H bar, starting from critical points. And, that, and then you'll see that uh, the kind of vibration n minus one dimensional spheres and projects to to this uh, ray which I draw on the plane exactly and for to draw gradient trajectory use some Keller metric and such it doesn't matter in a good situation which metric you choose so you get mm, the things and the same story happens you get uh, some upper triangular matrices uh, in with integer matrices and uh, the whole story mm. repeats uh, the integral will have, uh, again, will grow like exponent uh, crit uh, um, critical value divided by h bar and multiplied by 2 pi i h bar to power n over 2, and then we get some certain si some series. Ah, yeah, so uh, from this perspective, what you really know, you should know, you should know uh, all critical values and certain this uh, entrance element of the upper triangular matrices, which will be number of gradient flow for this uh, uh, for this from one point to another. Okay, so that's finite dimensional picture, and now we'll try to see what goes on in infinite dimension in field theory. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we do pass integral now. Yeah, so my space will be infinite dimensional. I do not like it is very big x. And it will be a set of points which will be do not seek x, which is a map from interval 0, 1, kind of time, leading time maybe, with coordinate t to uh, yeah, so I'll start with first non-trivial example, <coughs> hyperbolic plane. <coughs> you can take any remaining manifold, and also assume that fixed point uh, the end point goes to uh, some point zero, x zero. Will be two uh, given points on a, uh, on, a, on the hyperbolic plane x zero x one, and the, the all six depends on the distance because of homogeneity. This will be some real number. Yeah, so you get this infinite dimensional manifold, and mm. actional functional will be the following. It's usual. Kinetic energy okay <coughs> yeah so so we get function on some infin uh, infinite dimension manifold but now the whole philosophy is just to complexify everything so we can see the x complexified in the space of maps from zero one but to complexified um, mm, hyperbolic space and I use this realization hyperboloid to H2 complexified which will be just collection of whatever um, Z1, D2, Z3 in C cube such that Z1 square minus Z2 squared minus Z3 squared equal to 1 kind of complex sphere and uh, plus the same boundary condition Uh, so the functional expand to holomorphic function infinite dimensional variable um, um, story and 
Mm. Now we want to calculate integral over maybe x real. Uh, yeah, so what what is this integral? Uh, One to mechanics teach us this is the heat kernel. They claim it's I'll use kind of heat kernel. And I use quantum uh, mechanic notation, but it's uh, pretty obvious. You go from the bar exponent is h bar h x1, where h is Hamiltonian. Which is minus one half of Laplacian and half uh, hyperbolic plane. And you can see the heat kernel, the time is h bar and connect over x0, x1. Actually, this is a bit funny. <coughs> Why h bar appears in power one? In integral, it was in power minus one, yeah? Uh, but the reason is the following. If you look on the action, the action is in time of homogeneity degree minus one. So it means that if you're a scale, Things divided by h bar, it means your time multiplied by h bar. So it means that you map short, if you uh, short interval, and you get exactly this uh, thing. Yeah, so you get heat kernel, and people worked on this for centuries. They know what is this heat kernel, and classical formula. You can. Look, I don't know, even on Wikipedia, maybe. Yeah, so it says that it's something like square root divided by, by h bar to power 3 half. Exponent, maybe minus 1, h half or 2. And now this uh, main integral which appear here, uh, which I'll write in the following way. I go from s0 equal to l square over 2. Uh, l is the distance between 2 plus infinity. Exponent minus s over h bar multiplied by cosine hyperbolic square root of 2s minus cosine hyperbolic of l power 1 half times ds. Yeah, so you get this, yeah, <coughs> this formula. And mm, already this formula tells you everything about what are matrices, what are critical values, and uh, so on. We, we get certain algebraic functions of uh, it's like, like square root of some polynomial of infinite degree, I would say. Yeah, some. And uh, what you get? You get function of S, which is ramified ramification points, which is the same as complex critical values of, of action on xc eventually are numbers uh, sn <coughs> when this guy vanishes and numbers are of the following form l, l plus 2 pi i n squared over 2 where n is an integer. Mm. What does it mean? It's actually it's very funny. Uh, you see that hyperbolic space, it's like sphere of radius uh, minus one. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you were on a usual sphere, if you get two points, we can see the geodesics, we can go, uh, have infinitely many geodesics going around. We add uh, the, uh, the, uh, the two, pi, uh, 2 pi times radius. But here it's imaginary radius, it's radius 2 pi i. So we add a real number, this imaginary guys. And what we get here, we get points on some integer points on parabola in C, kind of it will be uh, uh, L square root 2, n equal to 0. But it's, it's, uh, uh, this is a critical value which really we uh, see in the classical station. And these are imaginary things which you see under complexification. And from this story, 
you see that one get many integrals. One get not only this integral, but can take pullback. Doesn't this think we, we draw, draw uh, horizontal rays from other points? And then we can rotate the story. If we rotate, we, we, from, from this formula, one can see immediately all uh, infinite by infinite integer matrices, uh, which go to the case. <coughs> and in fact, the integral uh, alpha is equal to n is integer. If you get uh, these integrals before uh, di division by uh, these things, uh, we see that they grow like exponent of this critical value as n minus h bar, but multiplied by h bar to power minus one half. Uh, and put them some series. Yeah. And this one half says that I it's morally like finite dimensional integral of, of manifold of dimension minus one. And I think it's kind of zeta regularized value of dimension, which we can see in this story. Yeah, yeah I think it's actually it's a very simple story. And I don't know, maybe it's new. I, I, never <laughs> yeah, I have to ask specialists. And I made my calculation myself. And uh, mm, it's, uh, uh, mm, here, here we're kind of in a lucky situation. We can solve everything explicitly. But uh, if you consider geodesics on kind of not on, on more complicated algebraic varieties, you don't know the answer, but the prediction will be the same the same structure. In particular, we, uh, we, uh, we can kind of uh, have the decomposition of one integral goes to some of another integrals, and uh, mm, in more general situation, you don't have this luxury to have finite dimensional integral representations. Yeah, so it's asks to the question uh, to really construct measures on the Slavshus symbols complex valued measures. It's like in the usual probability theory, people know Brownian motion. It's an um, actual honest measure which gives a heat kernel. But here it will be completely different sub-varieties of semi-infinite dimension and it should be kind of complex valued densities because it's a whole thing that's Christ to the, to the proof. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, one kind of baby example when you see infinitely many uh, critical values. Yeah, so this whole story has uh, mm. some generalization to the case of one forms, actually closed one forms. Um, yeah, first I'll start with uh, finite dimensional uh, uh, case when uh, you have this al again algebraic variety over complex numbers of and instead of action and functional we get algebraic one form which is closed and mm, yeah. One can go to universal cover. And on universal cover, uh, this pullback of this form will be differential of some action, certain holomorphic function. It's no longer polynomial. And then one can repeat. Uh, the story we get uh, symbols and uh, um, and one get also this regularized functions g alpha h, uh, h bar when I divide by leading term and these things independent on the choice of on the choice of lift because you add to function just a constant and they are normalized by this constant. Yeah, so you get finitely many, mm, uh, yeah, for example, if you consider zeros of, of the form and assume that they are again generic kind of Morse zeros, uh, finitely many of them, so you get only finitely many form of power series. You get a finite number of elements 
home power series in each bar. They're just stupid uh, copies. Yeah, so it's a kind of baby finite dimensional example of this channel Simon's theory, which Sergey considered. Okay. And I will go to kind of the most basic example in which one can imagine Stirling formula. Yeah, so what do I mean here? This variety is C star, and form is dx minus dx over x, which we can read as differential of x minus log x on universal cover. Okay, so downstairs we have only one critical point. Zero one, and critical values will be <coughs> zero one. But also we get these copies, and maybe C n is will be one plus two pi i n. We add add the period of your uh, form. But uh, let's do kind of first real integral. If h bar is positive number. Then the symbol is so only one critical point, so only one uh, symbol. The symbol is just positive ray. It's kind of from zero to infinity. So the critical point at one and this two gradient trajectory goes uh, goes to zero and infinity. Okay. And and the integral which we have here is I will not put index here. I h is equal to integral from zero to infinity. Exponent, you have to write this minus x of h bar, plus log x of h bar, bar dx. Simple story. And uh, modified thing. Uh, it, it will be the following. It will be exponent of mm, 1 over h bar to kill critical value, then multiply by 2 pi i h bar to power 1 half. It's uh, the dimension contribution times a0 a, a, a of h bar. And then you see that it's 1 over square root of to pi exponent of one over h bar. Ah, this is exactly leading term in Stirling formula for factorial, and so we get some certain series, <coughs> and and following Sergey's practice, I'll wrote draw first coefficients yeah these are not Bernoulli numbers because Bernoulli numbers appear in expansion of logarithm these are com completely messy numbers uh, it's uh, not the one which one? Uh, like yeah, maybe right. It's again sum of a n h n this series. Yeah. Uh, What is the Borel uh, uh, trans transform? K of A, 
Zitter. Zitter. Ah, this should be a nice function with infinite analytic continuation. And what is this function? It is uh, the following function. Claim it's given by the following integrals 1 over 2 1 half and 2 pi i and make certain contour integral uh, contour contour around 1 dx x minus log x minus zeta minus 1 to power 1 half um, yeah, yeah. So it's <coughs> you can see the contour, but uh, 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 f uh, it's it should be not too small uh, because it this guy has a ramification point at two points near uh, point one. Uh, uh, yeah, this thing grows like something like one uh, like quadratic function near one. And it has two ramification points. This contour should surround this two ramification points, so it's, it's completely one valued function. Yeah, so I get uh, this thing and how one can treat it. Yeah, yeah so my suggestion is it will be some kind of infinite dimensional algebraic geometry, a bit similar to what I have for heat kernel. Uh, namely, uh, for any zeta which is not in 2 pi i z and this 2 pi i z, it's difference between critical values. Uh, I define a curve, I, uh, I can find infinite genus curve, C zeta in uh, sitting in C times C with some coordinates z1 and z2. And the equation is the following, it's exponent z1 minus z1 minus um, uh, uh, zeta minus 1 times z2 squared is equal to 1. Yeah, it's ex essentially kind of consider 1 over z, uh, uh, z1 will be kind of logarithm of x and z2 will be denominator in the formula. And so I get this curve of infinite genus, it's ramified in some kind of infinitely many points, uh, roughly rank in some arithmetic progression and uh, 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 and we have one form and we integrate over uh, one chain classes in h1 of this curve uh, one form which is uh, z2 times differential of e to z1 yeah just mimic this expression yeah so we get a family of mm. Infinite genus curves, uh, uh, depending on parameter zeta, and when zeta is two pi a integers, this, this curve uh, degenerates. So I get some non-trivial monodromy, which is easy to describe. And what I integrated, <coughs> and uh, so eventually, uh, imme I, it's immediately proved that this thing has infinite analytic continuation, <coughs> because you can follow this uh, cycles along any path. Yeah, so that. Uh, mm, uh, uh, kind of uh, point of view from classical resurgence when we want to make uh, Laplace transform and if you don't, I don't want Laplace transform I want to kind of glue bundles the whole story it's even simpler it's uh, absolutely became almost tautology the whole story uh, I have this function j yeah and maybe take g uh, <coughs> plus is equal to of h bar is equal to j of h bar uh, but uh, where h belongs to c minus negative ray and to divide g minus h bar this will be function it will be 1 over j of minus h bar the h belongs to c minus positive ray. So I get one function on 
uh, this domain and one function on this domain. Uh, but uh, mm <coughs> in fact, I, I can restrict them to g plus. I can restrict to right hand plane, and g minus is it will be c infinity in analytic insight, and g minus restricted to right hand planes again is c infinity. And now we can compare how they. Uh, 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 What's this jump along uh, along the array, and the cl claim the following: is g minus on uh, r, r on positive r uh, on array which goes up is equal to g plus multiplied by one minus exponent of minus two pi i over h bar, and g minus restricted to r r negative. To plus multiplied by one minus exponent of plus two to pi i over h bar. Yeah. Yeah. No, so here now, forget, uh, forgetting about Borel transform uh, whatsoever, I say that what I glue here, it's uh, it's even simple situation. I consider trivial rank one, uh, rank one bundle on on C. I make two cuts, and along the cuts apply this transformation, which are very close to identity and have trivial. Uh, uh, Taylor coefficients, and this me describes this analytic properties, what are kind of resurgent properties of this uh, series J, form power series J, which through Borel transform is kind of more tricky. It's you get some uh, in, in Borel transform you get this kernel, and kernel gives a uh, multi-valued function or, or function on universal cover of this. Of this uh, C ramified is all integers. Yeah, but uh, this is kind of much more clean uh, description. And here, w w what's the comparison with old story? We have we have matrices which are different from identity matrix by exponential small terms, but now we have not on diagonal uh, not of diagonal terms, but on diagonal terms. And uh, these things can be explained in the following way. So, so my variety is C star and have my one critical points x equal to 1. And uh, in, uh, in the case of functions, uh, what I was wondering, how many gradient lines go from one point to another. But here, I sh I it's kind of a gradient lines on uh, universal cover, or gradient lines of this d d z, and I get essentially two uh, interesting gradient lines going to itself one direction, one way up or going up a direction. So it appears multiplicity actually minus one by some orientation. So it's here to get kind of coefficients minus one, which is integer. And here it will be length of the uh, integral one form of geodesic. So it explains all kind of mystery of gamma functions at once. Yeah, this picture. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, I will not talk about, uh, yeah, so, so the natural guess what, what, what goes on in chain Simon theory, it's kind of very similar to gamma function story, yeah, so uh, also there are different details, but sorry? Minus h belongs to c by minus r. Uh, uh, positive, yeah. 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 Okay. No. No. What, what's what's wrong? I don't understand. Uh, minus h uh, belongs to. Uh, minus h belongs to this guy. But it's a different function. It's that two different. It's functions on different domains. <coughs> In fact, you, this also comes from the analysis of the. Quantum mechanical problem of the harmonic oscillator. Yes, yes, no, it's related. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, actually, that's exactly, no, no not exactly, uh, where I will go now, quantum mechanics. Now, it's kind of my point, it will be complexified quantum mechanics. Uh, 
Uh, now, so, mm, so what will be this my variety? It will be already complex. I don't pick any real parameters here. It will be a space of maps. Okay, this x from interval to some uh, complex algebraic symplectic manifold. Symplectic form is also algebraic, like cotangent bundle, or C star cos C star. We see, and and said that um, if we should put some boundary condition. Zero L one are algebraic say Lagrangian submanifold. Yeah, um, yeah. So on, on this guy I have a closed one form. I just integrate uh, form omega. Um, Along the path, I get one form, and uh, yeah. So uh, if one can f want to write in some coordinates, if let's say p i q i are like uh, coordinates on M, uh, uh, conjugate coordinates, then uh, you write kind of the action is defined up to constant is equal to integral over sum over P i d q i d t, kind of first order uh, actual functional, and um, it's actually not, it's not, not the most general action which you can write, in uh, maybe at kind of boundary terms, but also uh, this is L zero L one can give you some boundary terms. But um, what one can add here, one can also integrate h of p q t d t. Yeah, it's it's a different uh, term, and this heat kernel when the, yeah, when this Hamiltonian is really present, it's quadratic in momenta and uh, Hamiltonian, which gives you geodesic flow. But now I I'll consider a case when there's really no such data. I have uh, some pure geometric data, just two Lagrangian submanifold, nothing else, and then should get some kind of number or. Uh, 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 all the story. So critical points, uh, if you consider this kind of the most basic action, are constant maps to intersection points. To some uh, zero one, to some intersection point, to p alpha, which belongs to p zero l one. Mm. And then one can try to repeat the whole game. We get infinite dimension manifold, complex manifold with closed one form. Uh, we get uh, this critical points and interesting in gradient flow. What are gradient lines? The gradient lines are mm. if you get some point P alpha one, P alpha two, uh, uh, will be pseudo holomorphic disks. It will be pass in space pass in space of pass. These boundary conditions will be pseudo holomorphic disks. When you write Cauchy Riemann equation for some almost complex structure. Which is not original complex structure; it will be different almost structure, <coughs> um, uh, kind of compatible with it's a different one, depending on edge bar. Uh, yeah, Frankel can choose hyperkähler metric, but it's um, this story. It's very soft; you don't really need integrability condition. Like sy symplectic structure is what is the complex symplectic structure? Holomorphic symplectic structure, holomorphic. algebraic holomorphic. It's not not Keller form. It's just G squared for minus identity. 
No, no, but here you get pseudo-homomorphic for some different story because you need to use some Keller metric and if you analyze it and take a real flow for real part of the section, you get certain different almost complex structure. And in kind of stocks race, uh, the things when you, you bump from one critical point to another, uh, uh, critical, uh, another line mean will mean that 1 over h bar integral of form of some uh, such disk is is positive real number that gives a condition on h bar. Um, so what th what this integral should morally calculate? Yeah, if manifold is, is cotangent bundle to some variety. Like what is h bar here? Sorry. So what is h bar here? H bar is a number, complex number. Complex number. Yeah, yeah. This is condition of argument of h bar, so it should be argument of this integral. Mm. So mm, if m is cotangent bundle, suppose l zero is arbitrary. So cotangent bundle is fibered by cotangent space. But suppose L1 is cotangent space at some given point. So this will be kind of L1. L0 it will be L1. Uh, this integral, uh, what it should be morally give? Because L0 should give like family of uh, d modules, holonomic d modules, or differential equations, depending on h bar, and which uh, uh, converge to some uh, uh, spectral variety L zero in classical limit, and, uh, and the things should calculate uh, uh, solution with the right way. Uh, if you consider intersection point corresponding to this uh, lecture symbol should. Uh, this thing should uh, be solution with right double KB asymptotics. The value of solution point y. So the integral should be solution with correct double KB asymptotic at point y. I write some system of equations and I see the solution. Yeah, it's one can um, try to look all, all the story. And for example, one can try to move point y and see this resurgence, how it depends on point y. And then there is some kind of interesting phenomena will happen here. Uh, in general, if you do finite dimensional integral and start to move parameters, then the gradient number of gradient lines will jump uh, according to usual kind of picard formula. And what happens in usual station, if you have two gradient lines, they can uh, Gradient trajectory one point to third point, third point. Then, uh, for uh, special values of h bar, with zika lines, you'll, you get a new gradient line, which goes from first to three. And what what goes on in this geometry? So if you have um, uh, count this pseudo holomorphic disks in real co-dimension one, it can split in homomorphic disk is exactly like gradient trajectory splits to two gradient trajectory or will be completely new phenomena so it will get you get develop some disk on l0 or develop a disk on l1 yeah so you get uh, something mm. uh, some new phenomena which has no analogs in finite dimensional situation uh, so something wrong goes with your number of uh, gradient lines. Mm. Uh, I just have a couple of minutes to explain what here goes on. Yeah, uh, so there, are, there is a problem with individual Lagrangian manifold, with L0 and L1 when you get these holomorphic disks. It has nothing to do with now with, if, uh, with if pass integral. It's some kind of mm, uh, Lagrangian L0 or L1. It's not interaction both of them, it's just with individual guys something wrong goes on. 
how to understand what, what happens. If you can see the fundamental group of this space, it's uh, pretty big, a space of paths. It's roughly uh, uh, get a contribution fundamental group where one end can appear, and it's where another end can appear. In this station, L L1 is simply connect, but L0 could be have huge homotopy group, and maybe also pi 2 of M itself. Yeah, that's a rough, rough picture. And uh, that's actually the origin of the story, that it has big fundamental group. It has many, for example, rank one local system. Uh, so let's uh, return to the case. Case uh, manifold form with, uh, with finite dimensional case. We have this finite dimensional case with one form, and um, what one can try to see that uh, this you get uh, cohomology of x. Uh, maybe I'm uh, sorry to be a bit uh, with the risky topology. <laughs> it's really important to say this way. Uh, this algebraic forms and with differential d plus 1 over h bar eta. Yeah, this integral, which you calculate it, um, the volume form can be considered as cl closed class in this case, and integration cycles are functionals in this case. Uh, this kind of left of symbols gives basis in dual space. Uh, when considered Timbal's universal cover, is it something for which this expression one can integrate? Uh, so you get a basis, and uh, when you cross the Stokes race, this basis goes to some linear combination of other uh, elements of the basis. Uh, but uh, one can twist the whole story by uh, considering some uh, torus, which will be. Uh, home from fundamental group of my manifold to C star. It will be C star to up to finite thing to first beta number. Mm, it will be finite dimensional torus. And for any point on this torus, we get corresponding local system. And we can put things with coefficients in the local system. Now with regular singularity. So it's a uh, uh, whole story. So we get not only one uh, store on only one um, uh, this calculus, but depending on the torus, all this resurgent story uh, with gluing bundles will be kind of holomorphic family of such guys on on a torus. Get holomorphic family over some torus, complex torus of uh, resurgent uh, picture in this case when I glue things along rays. Not, not, not through Barrett transform. Yeah, so uh, it, it looks at the same one can do in infinite dimensions. So we we'll get space of one dimension rank one local systems. It's again C star to some finite number. And this effect says you the following. In kind of in a quantum field series, there will be certain normalization. The space will be modified. Of, uh, it will be replaced. The space of rank lo local system will be a complex variety, but it will be not a torus. It will be not even a billion group. Yeah, so it means that all these twisting parameters, it forms some abstract complex variety, which actually is cluster varieties in various situations. Uh, um, which is closed but not equal to a torus. Uh, namely, wh what goes on? I if you consider a, a generic argument of H bar, this will be identified at least some part of it with a torus. But if you go through H bar, uh, 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 go through some the Stokes ray, uh, certain Stokes ray. Uh, Mm, what you get, you get automorphism of the group ring of the fundamental group. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. 
Jetzt ist er, also, also finde ich schon viel. Couple of minutes. Mm. Ja. If H bar argument H bar crosses array, which is argument of the integral of form of the disk such that boundary of disk belongs to let's say L0 or L1. Uh, uh, you change, you may apply automorphism of group ring of the fundamental group of L0, say, corresponding to L1. Uh, and this is a uh, wall crossing which with Jan started, and this um, it's actually explained by Gayotu Muronetsky uh, uh, through some gauge theory, but I claim this is a purely dramatic uh, story, have nothing to do with. Uh, peculiarity mm. uh, the story depending on small parameter along the uh, yeah for example this is a very simple example suppose my Lagrangian manifold let's say zero it's s1 cross s1 uh, or it contains s1 cross s1 it's because uh, it should be elliptic curve yes. yeah because it's complex curve yeah and Suppose I have some holomorphic disk uh, with this, uh, which with boundary on some uh, thing. Then, if I cross appropriate ray, the, uh, the argument of the integral of two forms of the disk, that, that, that the transformation will go to the following. If I get C star cross C star, goes to something like Z1, Z2, multiplied by 1 plus exponent. Uh, and central of h bar of this disk d multiplied by z, z1. So it's, it's with some nonlinear change of rank one local space of rank, rank one local system. And uh, this is 4D wall crossing of Gaiotto Murnetsky. So it's before going to this pass integral, it's already in which individual manifold to get uh, kind of identification of tori. Yeah, kind of the most basic example, if you consider Lagrangian manifold sitting in cotangent bound to C, which is uh, some p cube plus x cube plus some whatever, something, uh, uh, symbol of, of, of Hamiltonian with cubic potential, then the standard picture is that what you get, you get five Stokes rays and you get nonlinear Riemann Hilbert problem. Namely, you want to map, uh, you want to find two functions like z1, z2 here, z2, z3 here, z3, z4 here, z4, z5 here, and here z5, z1. Have two functions in each uh, uh, race which are c infinity up to the boundary. Uh, up to boundary uh, in each sector. And uh, mm, uh, when you cross the sector, for example, you go from z1, z2 to z2, z3. So z2 go to z2. And z3 will be exactly the same formula. It will be z1 times 1 plus exponent of corresponding constant, depending on the sector of each bar, which will be totally real, uh, times z2. Yeah, so you get, uh, now you glue nonlinear manifold and consider holomorphic sections. Uh, uh, this is a uh, um, basic uh, uh, kind of 4D wall crossing in, uh, in gauge theory origins. Uh, again, you solve uh, this Riemann-Hilbert problem abstractly, and then one can add also some vector bundles here. Uh, for example, if you, uh, it's only some parameter spaces for, for integrals, and for uh, manifold for things you can good should do something like this, G plus Again, exponent something called which bar, maybe g2 times z1, something like this. You, uh, you, you, you now glue vector bundles, again, using exponential terms and monomials in z. Uh, this will be 2D, 4D wall crossing. And um, the conjecture, that this you get some big class of uh, this analytic objects, which give formal power series expansion. And this formal power se series expansion conjecture will be a resurgent in a Borel summation way. Yeah, so that's that's a picture. Thank you.
And any questions? So what is nonlinear manifold here? Uh, it's kind of, uh, you make gluing, uh, it's manifold. <laughs> nonlinear means it's uh, we glue by some nonlinear change of uh, coordinates. Okay. Is this uh, exponential term comes from some instant in correction? Yes, yes, yeah, it, it will be this area of this holomorphic disks, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Is there a version of this where sort of disks have um, uh, spheres and, and without boundaries on Lagrangians? Yeah, it's an interesting story because it's all, all the story, it's only genus zero, only disks, but definitely high genus should contribute to some second computation of the story, which I don't know. You had this example with the hyperbolic plane. Yes. You had these two points lying on the parabola. Yeah. What are the, the intersections of the tables in this case? It's very easy to calculate from this uh, double cover story. It will be plus minus one with alter alternating. Okay. Yeah. And almost everything is zero. No, plus minus one, I suppose, yeah. It's, yeah. Of the diagonal, of diagonal terms, yeah. It, it's <coughs> completely controllable, the story, yeah. Yes, so let's thank you again.